This is the 35th year of a harsh, brutal, and vicious occupation supported unilaterally by the United States, constant terror and atrocities. Uh, the, suppose Palestinians say, well, we're under terrorist attack for 35 years, therefore we have a right to carry out suicide bombs. Which is what they say. Do you accept this? Does anybody accept it? Nobody accepts it. All right, then how come everyone accepts the Israeli claim to be doing it, which is a much weaker claim? Because after all, there's no symmetry in the situation. They are the military occupiers. Palestine isn't occupying Israel. And this isn't just started now. It's gone on years ago. I mean... So does that, in your mind, justify no, the suicide No, of course not. It doesn't. It doesn't in anybody's so mind. So it invalidates both sides. Th those who defend suicide bombing and there are very few, uh, have not, not, don't have a leg to stand on. Those who defend the Israeli atrocities, including the U.S. government, uh, most intellectual opinion, a uh, good bit of the West generally, yeah, they don't have a leg to stand on either, and, it's, and they have a much weaker position. For 35 years, uh, there has been a harsh, brutal, miserable oc military occupation. Uh, there has not been a political settlement. The reason why there has not been a political settlement is that the United States unilaterally has blocked it for 25 years. Is it supported by the entire world, including the majority of the American people? The answer to that question is yes. There is a political settlement that has been supported by virtually the entire world, including the Arab states, the PLO, Europe, Eastern Europe, Canada. Didn't Barack put that on the table? No, he team? did not. He did not. What this it is also supported by the majority of the American people. It has just been reiterated by Saudi Arabia. The U.S. has unilaterally blocked it for 25 years. What Barack put on the table, uh, the, the population doesn't know this because people like the Western media, the media in Canada and the United States don't tell them. Like, you can check and see how often you, uh, you, for example, or others have reported what I just said. I don't, don't bother checking. The answer is zero. Uh, the Barack proposal in uh, Camp David, in uh, uh, the Barack Clinton proposal, uh, in the United States, I didn't check the Canadian media. In the United States, you cannot find a map, which is the most important thing, of course. Check in Canada and see if you can find a map. You go to Israel, you can find a map. You go to scholarly sources, you can find a map. Here's what you find when you look at a map. Uh, you find that this generous, magnanimous proposal uh, guaranteed, uh, uh, provided uh, uh, Israel with a salient east of Jerusalem, uh, including the city of Ma'ale Adumim, which was established primarily by the labor government and Clinton in order to bisect the West Bank. That salient goes almost to Jericho, breaks the West Bank into two cantons. Then there's a second salient to the north, uh, going to the Israeli settlement of Ariel, which bisects the northern part into two cantons. So we've got three cantons in the West Bank, virtually separated. All three of them are separated from a small area of East Jerusalem, which is the center of Palestinian commercial uh, uh, and cultural life and of communication. So you've got four cantons, all separated from the west, from Gaza, so that's five cantons, all surrounded by uh, Israeli settlements, infrastructure development, and so on, uh, which also incidentally guarantee Israel control over the water resources, the reason. Last comment. This does not rise to the level of South Africa 40 years ago when uh, South Africa established the Bantu stands. That's the generous, magnanimous offer. Okay. And there's a good reason why maps weren't shown, because as soon as you look at the map, you see it. All right. However, that's the characterization of it. But let me just say, Arafat didn't even bother putting a counterproposal on that's the table. Not, no, that's not true. They negotiated at Taba us. afterwards. That's not true. But w I, I guess my question is, that's if not they true. don't continue to they negotiate, did, that's, that's totally false. And no, that no, that's and no not, part that's false? Not only is it false, but not a single participant in the meetings says it. That's a media fabrication. That Arafat didn't put a counterproposal you know, they had a proposal, on the table? They had a proposal. They proposed the international consensus, uh, which has been accepted by the entire world, 
the Arab states, the PLO, the majority of the sorry. American... Sorry, they proposed a settlement which is in accord with an overwhelming I international guess consensus my question is, if and is blocked talk, by the United States. The problem that people look at now the Middle East is they say it's spun out of control. How do you get back to... First way we how get, do get back? First way we get back is by trying the experiment of minimal honesty. Okay, let's try that experiment. If we try the experiment of minimal honesty, we look at our own position and we discover what I just described, that for 25 years, the United States has blocked the political settlement, which is supported by the majority of the American population and by the entire world, except for Israel, virtually. I mean, there's some marginal exceptions. Uh, so for the first thing we do is accept the honesty to look at that. We take a look at Camp David uh, and we see, yeah, it was the same. Uh, the United States was still pro propose, uh, 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 demanding a Bantustan-style settlement and rejecting the overwhelming international consensus and the position of the American people. We then discover that the United States immediately moved to enhance terror in the region. So let's continue. Uh, on September 29th, uh, Ehud Barak uh, put a massive military presence outside the Al-Aqsa Mosque. Uh, very provocative. When people came out of the mosque, uh, the young people started throwing stones, the Israeli army started shooting, half a dozen people were killed and it escalated. The next couple of days, uh, there was no Palestinian fire at this time, and this was all in occupied territories. In the next couple of days, uh, Israel used uh, Amer U.S. helicopters. Israel produces no helicopters. Used U.S. helicopters to attack civilian complexes killing about a dozen people and wounding several dozen. Uh, Clinton reacted to that on October 3rd by making the biggest deal in a decade to send Israel new military helicopters, uh, which had just been used for the purpose I described, and of course would continue to be. Uh, the U.S. press cooperated with that uh, by refusing to publish the story. To this day, they have not published the fact. Uh, it continued. Uh, when Bush came in, one of his first acts was to send Israel a new shipment of the most advanced military helicopters in the arsenal. That continues right up to a couple of weeks ago with new shipments. You take a look at the reports from, say, Janine by British correspondents like Peter Beaumont in the London Observer. He says the worst atrocity there was the uh, Apache helicopters buzzing around, uh, destroying and demolishing everything. You know, this is enhancing terror. Uh, and we may easily continue. Uh, we can take, uh, also, let me continue. On December 15th, 14th, uh, the Security Council tried to pass a resolution uh, calling for what everyone recognized to be the obvious means for reducing terror, namely sending international monitors. That's a way of reducing terror. This happened to be in the middle of a quiet period, which lasted for about three weeks. Uh, the U.S. vetoed it. Uh, oh, ten days before that, there was a meeting at Geneva of the high contracting parties of the Fourth Geneva Convention, uh, which has unanimously held for 35 years that it applies to Israel. Uh, it, the meeting uh, condemned the Israeli settlements as illegal, condemned a list of atrocities, uh, willful destruction of property, uh, murder, uh, trials, torture, and so on and so forth. So right. no, okay. What happened to that meeting? Oh, I'll tell you what happened to that meeting. The U.S. boycotted it. Uh, therefore, the media refused to publish it. Therefore, no one here knows that the United States once again enhanced terror uh, by uh, refusing to recognize the applicability of conventions which make virtually everything the United States and the uh, Israel are doing there a, a grave breach of the Geneva Conventions, which means a war crime. Just a minute. These conventions were established uh, in, in 1949 in order to criminalize the atrocities of the Nazis in occupied territory. They are customary international law. The United States is obligated as a high contracting party to prosecute violations of those conventions. That means to prosecute its own leadership for the last 25 years.